Next up in our Big 12 preview is the West Virginia Mountaineers. And Dalton, Neil Brown, their head coach, he was in the hot seat entering last year after a 22-25 and 25 record over his first four years. And there really wasn't much optimism that he would keep his job, right? They had a four-and-a-half preseason win total, but they dominated all those expectations last year, had a 9-4 and four finish, winning the Dukes Mayo Bowl. It was the program's best season in seven years years. Garrett Green broke out. They had an electric running game that you'll talk about in just a second. Uh, they really should have one of the more exciting offenses in the Big 12. Absolutely, and it starts on the ground with this three-headed monster. And look, if you're going to go from four-win expectation to nine-win season, you need some guys to break out. And you look in their backfield first at Jaheim White, one of the best freshman backs in the country last year. C.J. Donaldson also had over 800 yards. And Garrett Green, I'll talk about his arm in a minute, but Garrett Green on the ground, too. Tying for the FBS lead among quarterbacks with 13 rushing touchdowns. He's a threat to house one anytime he's got the ball, either in the design game or scrambling. This three-headed rushing monster that they have in their backfield is a real problem for opposing defenses. It absolutely is. And if you go to the other side of the ball, they have a really good secondary. And we'll talk about one of those guys in the secondary in just a second. Uh, and they brought in some really good transfers in that secondary, like Jaheim Joseph and uh, Garnet Hollis Jr., two guys from Northwestern that we both like. But their pass rush is definitely the, probably the biggest weakness of this team right now. They really struggled to get after the quarterback last year. They were among the 20 worst in the nation in terms of pass rush win rate at 29%. Also, two of their four starting defensive linemen transferred, including edge defender Jared Bartlett, uh, who was the only defensive lineman that had a pass rush grade above a 65. So Jared Bartlett um, was the only even solid pass rusher last year, and he ended up leaving to go to Cincinnati uh, in the transfer portal. So this pass rush for West Virginia, yes, they have a really good secondary that can make up for it on passing plays, but the pass rush is a little bit of a concern for West Virginia right now. Don, talk to me about Garrett Green, who I think is a PFF darling, man. I, I think there's so many people who think he's a bad quarterback because you look at the completion percentage, and it's like low 50s, and you're like, oh, this is not great. But tell me why we think, at least, Garrett Green is one of the 10 best quarterbacks in college football. Garrett Green is a home run hitter. Look, he led the FBS in big time throw rate and he led the FBS in rushing touchdowns. He is, I don't want to say all or nothing, but there is an element to that, an extremely high average depth of target. But tell you what, he's only about six foot and 200, but he's got an absolute rifle. He's willing to challenge any defense to make any throw down the field. He is just a play maker. And right now, is it high variance? Yes. I'll be honest with you, though, Max. The accuracy is the biggest concern. You mentioned hovered around 52% completion percentage last year, which is, that's a problem, right? That is too low. If he's the guy, I think, if he got that up to like a passable rate, like they used to talk about this with Josh Allen, like if he got to somewhere like 60 or 62%, I think he would fly up NFL draft boards. He's got an absolute cannon. He's got really good feet. And even with the kind of gunslinger mentality, you would think, okay, now there's a lot of turnover where they plays and things like that. Only eight turnover-worthy plays all season and only took four sacks all season, Max. Uh, and he played 11 of, actually, I should say 12 of the 13 games. He missed one game due to injury. He is a true home run hitter, and there's not a ton of downside other than he just has a few handfuls of throws that need to be a little more accurate, right? Especially he misses more open receivers on some like easier throws that you would like. But, man, you can't argue with a 10% big-time throw rate and as many big plays as he makes. He's really – I almost kind of want to call him like the Kyle Schwarber of quarterbacks, right, <laughs> where it's like he's just – he's going to swing for the fences and sometimes he's going to miss. But you know what? The end result is a really, really good football player that puts up a lot of production. I think Garrett Green, even as far as next year's NFL draft cycle goes, is one of the sleeper quarterbacks in the country. Dude, he absolutely is. And he had a 90 grade for us last year. And that's the thing I want people to understand when you look at that completion percentage, right? And yes, the accuracy, like I said, is a little bit of a question mark. But dude, he's throwing the ball farther downfield than anyone else in college football. Like he is taking deep shots, which obviously when you're taking deep passes that much, uh, you're not going to be completing a, a high rate of them. But uh, yeah, he is taking shots all the time, man. He had an average at the target of 13 and a half yards, which led the power five last year. In a lot of ways, Dawn, he's kind of like the big 12 version of Jalen Moreau, right? Where it's like he's going for a run or he's taking a shot downfield. And there's no in-between. Now I think he's got to find more of an in-between game in the short and intermediate to maybe become more of a complete 
quarterback. But yeah, you mentioned him. He's a big game hunter. That is the perfect way to describe uh, Garrett Green. And one of the reasons why he's able to stand back there and have time to throw downfield is because of his offensive tackle in Wyatt Milam, who's one of the best offensive tackles that we have in college football. Has been a starter for all three years in Morgantown. Spent his freshman year at right tackle, flipped over to left tackle the last two years. And over those last two years, 82.5 grade. That is top 15 among all tackles in college football. He had an 89.6 pass blocking grade on true pass sets this past season, which is the second in the country behind only Patrick Paul from Houston. Also, one of only four tackles in America with top 20 grades as both a pass blocker and a run blocker. He's got a really good anchor, a very, very strong player. He's at his best in a gap scheme. And Don, I think he's one of the five best tackles that we have in college football right now and could be a day two pick maybe in the NFL draft as well. Yeah, I think when you've got you got a left tackle like that, you got backs, you got a quarterback, you got weapons, you got everything to get in shootouts, right? Then you turn it over to the defense, and I have to love what they've done in their secondary, right, with the transfer portal. You mentioned two guys from Northwestern, Jaheim Joseph and Garnet Hollis are going to be really good players, but the guy I want to focus on de- on on defense is an incumbent player, right? Their free safety, Aubrey Burks, who was one of our top ten safeties in the country, a ninety point three coverage grade over the last two seasons. Straight up, he's just one of the best cover safeties in college football, right? Kind of quiet, makes plays on the ball here and there. I think he had two or three interceptions last year. Just like a really good, especially like a deep half zone defender. He's really been their best player in the secondary the last couple of years. And now they add some some external talent in there with it. I know the concern is going to be about the front seven. How much can they rush the passer? But I'll tell you what, this team can cover, and Aubrey Burks is the glue that holds it all together. He absolutely is, man. I think he's a top 10 safety that we have. Uh, in college football right now. Dolan, uh, for a team that went 9-4 and four last year and, and brought back their star quarterback, two-star running backs, and a star left tackle and a really good secondary, their win total right now on FanDuel is 6.5. Are you? Do you think West Virginia is really underrated or do you agree with FanDuel in the sports books and think, hey, this is more of like a 6-6, six and 7-5 six, and five team or do you think this is a team that is being severely underrated right now? Um, I think that's in part because they have a tough out-of-conference. I know they play Penn State first again. I know that the schedule plays a part in those projections. But, no, I'm going to be honest. I think this is the sleeper in the Big 12. I I think this is a team that can contend. When you talk about an NFL-caliber left tackle, a monster rushing attack, a quarterback that can make every throw on the field. And, look, last year was his first year starting. He didn't play a whole lot before last year. And that's what he came out and did and put up a 90 grade. People aren't talking about Garrett Green enough. People aren't talking about the Mountaineers enough. And again, their secondary, I have to really like it. It's one of the better secondaries in the Big 12. Those guys they got from Northwestern are really, really good football players. And another guy up front we haven't mentioned yet, TJ Jackson, they got in there from Troy. That's a really good player on the defensive yep. line as well. Played for a really good defense down there at Troy last year. So uh, to me, this is the sleeper team in the Big 12. If we were looking for someone to upend, and, and I'm, I'll be honest with you, if Garrett Green were to get to that 60 to 62% accuracy number, and that's a big jump, maybe it's going to be something more like 58, right? I think you're talking about a guy who could put up dual threat numbers to, to work himself into the back end of the Heisman conversation. Because you look at the combination of, you know, let's say he throws for 3,500 and rushes for like 1,200. A lot of guys with those types of numbers get in Heisman conversations. And, and I think. If I, I wouldn't put him in the inner, so you know Dylan Gabriel, Travis Hunter, whatever, whoever else you want to throw in there. But if there was a guy lurking on the edges of that with a little bit of improvement, I think Garrett Green could be that guy. Yeah, I think he really could be too, man. Kind of like a Pat White, you know, throw, throwback to the West Virginia days, right? I love Pat White, and yeah, Garrett Green could be a, a rushing threat like that, and uh, yeah, it's a really good quarterback overall. But yeah, I don't. I'm I'm with you, man. They have the ninth best odds to win the conference right now, according to FanDuel. I, I don't think it's the ninth best team in the Big Twelve. You tell me they're a below average team in the Big Twelve. I'm not with that at all. I, if I'm a betting man, I'm taking the over on that six and a half win total. It is a tough schedule, and that's a good point by you. It's actually the third hardest schedule in the Big Twelve according to our power rankings. One of the forty hardest that we have in college football. As you mentioned, they play Penn State, they play Kansas, they play Oklahoma State, they play Iowa State, they play Kansas State, they play Arizona, they play UCF. Like that's Tough. They play almost every good team uh, in the Big 12 Conference, uh, including uh, Penn State team is probably a top 10 team in the country. So that is tough, but I do think, man, with that quarterback, that run game, that offensive line, and that secondary, 
yeah, they could surprise a lot of people next year. And they could win some games that maybe they're not favored in as well next year. So I'm with you that this might be the sleeper team uh, in the Big 12 Conference right now because of that electric ground game, especially, that they have on offense. That's what we got for our preview, though, of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Hey, thanks for watching the PFF College Football Show. Before I let you go, though, we have an unbelievable deal for you guys right now. If you use the code CFB25, you get 25% off your PFF Plus annual subscription. We've got the 2024 College Football Preview Guide that you can find over at pff.com featuring the best players in the country from all 70 Power 5 teams plus 10 Group of 5 teams that have the best chance at making the College Football Playoff as well. You can also gain access to NCAA premium stats for historical games, uh, teams, and player tracking dating all the way back to 2014, so the last decade or so of college football. All the stats you can hope for, you can find in PFF Premium as well. Also, you can be the GM of your favorite NFL team with our unbelievable mock draft simulator where you can draft up to seven rounds of players for your NFL team. And if you want to dominate your fantasy league, you can do that as well using the best fantasy tools on the planet. All of that and more with your PFF Plus annual subscription, which you can find for 25% off right now with the code you can find in the description. Or if you want to go to subscribe.pff.com and use the code CFB25 at checkout. Again, you get 25% off your PFF Plus subscription. This won't last forever, so make sure you take advantage of it right now.